Welcome to the Halo Forge Epidemic. Master Debates here, covering some of the basics of scripting in Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge. Now, the scripting in Forge for the new game is actually pretty complex. Um, there's a lot of different things you have to uh, look at when you're trying to investigate uh, how scripting works. So, I'm going to actually break down the scripting into a three-part video series, each video covering one of the basic types of scripting objects you can use in Forge. So for this first video, I will be covering the first type of scripting switch, which is actually called just switches. So if you go to your Forge menu and you head over to scripting, you can see that there are three different kinds of scripting objects. And as I said before, I will be covering the first, which are switches. Now when you load up the switches menu, you'll see that there are three different types, the switch on, the switch off, and the switch toggle. And they behave quite like you'd expect. So, by default, objects are set to an off position when loaded onto Forge. So, the switch on uh, scripting switch will basically activate an object as long as it can be interacted with. So, basically, let's say, for example, if you have a gate and the gate by default is closed and you want to open the gate, you assign a switch on to the gate, you hit the switch, and the gate will open. Now, the switch off will only work in correspondence with an object that's already been activated or turned on. And basically what the switch off does is it just turns off the object. So using the same gate example, if the gate is open, if you assign it to a switch off and then switch the gate off, it'll close back up. Now in order to make it, of course, much easier, you can just have the on and off switch combined into one with the switch toggle. And that basically allows you to hold down the button to activate the switch and either activate or deactivate the object depending on whatever state it's already in. Now, along with these kinds of switches, there are two other switches that behave in a very similar manner. If you go to Gadgets and go to Map Gadgets, you'll see something called the Garage Door Switch. And the Garage Door Switch is essentially the switch that you saw in the IGN Forge demo that the Hornet shot. Now, the Garage Door Switch behaves exactly like a switch on where when you shoot the switch, it'll power on the object. However, the difference is that this switch can only be used once. Like once you shoot the garage door switch, the light will go off and it'll stay off. So it's a one-time use. Perfect to be used by a vehicle. Of course, when you're trying to open up a gate as shown in the forge demo. Another uh, shoot switch that you can use is if you go back to scripting and then you go to the last uh, uh, type of switch, uh, trigger, uh, you can go to trigger on destroyed, which is this orange thing that like the uh, garage door switch, when you shoot the trigger on destroyed, it'll stop glowing and it'll go ahead and activate the switch. Now I'm gonna show you guys some examples of some of these switches firsthand. So here you have the standard gate switch and I have it hooked up to a switch toggle. So basically all you want to do to get this switch working is you go to switch toggle and you go to the scripting settings on the object properties and by default everything will be negative one, the can despawn will be set to false. Um, you want to set the broadcast channel to a specific channel off of negative one. Uh, negative 1 is the default channel, and objects will not work when set to negative 1 for the broadcast. So you just want to set it to anything from 0 to 63. For this example, I'm using 7. Now you want to go to the garage door, go to scripting, and you want to set the broadcast channel on the garage door to match the switch toggle set to 7. Also, as a little added bonus, now this isn't required to get the switch to work, but if you're trying to locate a switch on a map, it's easier to use an aesthetic like this. Um, you can have a wall switch, which if you want to set one on the map, go to gadgets, go to map gadgets, and switch is the first option. Now if you want to link the switch so that it displays the, um, the condition of the gate, you pretty much want to set this switch to the same channel as the switch toggle by going to scripting and setting the broadcast channel again to 7. Now what this does you'll see here, and notice that this switch toggle doesn't have to be attached to this switch directly. When I hit this switch, the gate will start to close, as well as this switch will close and the hologram will disappear, indicating that it's been activated. 
and it will close up. Now, because it's a toggle switch, I can reactivate the switch, the hologram will reappear, and the gate will close back up. Now, moving on to something a little bit more advanced, you'll see over here that we have a bridge in front of a uh, a control switch, a console switch. I'm sorry, console switch. Now the console switch behaves a lot like the switch that you had on the wall there. It's an aesthetic piece, and if you set the console switch to match the same broadcast channel as the switch toggle, it'll blue screen like you saw in the Forge demo. So here it's channel 13. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the broadcast channel to 13. Uh, let me change the power channel back to negative one, although it doesn't really matter in this case. So this matches that. So when you actually go ahead and hit the switch, you'll notice that it blue screens. And that's all that does. Now, you'll see here that it actually doesn't disappear. Um, but it will disappear when you load up in custom games. It's just that in Forge, you can't have the objects despawn with a switch. And when I load up in custom games later on, you'll see exactly what that does. Now, over here you'll see the garage door switch linked up to another bridge. So basically with the garage door switch, you go into the scripting, you set the broadcast channel to a specific channel not used by anything else. And with this bridge here, you go to scripting and you set the spawn channel again like the last one to the same channel. Now, if you want to turn a bridge on or off, another important thing you have to consider is that there is a can despawn option on the bridge properties and you want to set that to true and that'll make it basically so that if the object is already physically there you can have it despawn as well as spawn back so keep that in mind and as you can see over here we have the on destroyed trigger which basically linked up to this bridge here by making the spawn channel the same as that of the trigger when you shoot this trigger, it'll make the bridge spawn. And like the others, if you go to advance, you can see place at start is set to false, so it will not be there at the start of the game. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a custom game and test all of these out again. All right, so now that we have loaded up the map in custom games, you'll see here that we are at the first bridge, and you'll see that it is not set there by default. So when we go ahead and hit the switch, you'll see that the bridge spawns. Also, because it's a toggle switch, you can go ahead and hit it again, and the bridge will despawn. Now, this is the garage door switch, and as you can see, the light is lit up, and the bridge is not there. So if I go ahead and shoot until the light turns off, you'll see that the bridge spawns back right away. And here is the last example where you see the trigger on destroyed, as well as the bridge that is not there right away. So if you go ahead and shoot this, this also spawns. Thanks again guys for tuning into the Halo Forge epidemic and stay tuned for two more scripting videos. In the next video I will be covering the second type of scripting item known as the timers. Until next time guys.